servant leadership, Professor, Professor Jones, Professor Jones, servant leadership. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, um, thank you very much to Rupinder for having me here. I believe I have about 10 minutes. So I will try to do justice and cover my topic within that limit <clears throat> because time management is uh, is a very important thing. And despite your philosophical question, how important is time? I believe uh, it's essential to respect other people's time as well as your own because uh, time is money in many ways. Right? However, the topic for my uh, session today is servant leadership, and I'm going to start you off with a short story. Um, according to the Gregorian calendar. On March 25, 80, 33, 30 people got together in a room on the first floor of a small place in a town called Jerusalem. The 12 disciples were called the apostles, and their teacher or the guru was who we call the religious leader, Jesus Christ. Now, as the evening progressed, this evening was very special because it was supposed to be the Last Supper, uh, made internationally famous by. <clears throat> Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, there is a classic painting um, and which captured that emotion of that particular day because the next day he was going to be crucified. Um, as the evening progressed, he did, a, he did something which was unheard of at that particular time. Uh, he, got, he asked for a bowl of water and took a towel and started washing the feet of all his disciples. Obviously, the, to borrow a term from you, you they were flummoxed because no teacher or guru would do that. It was the job of slaves to wash other people's feet when they would arrive for you know, a certain event or guest uh, or dinner or something like that. Now, um, these 12 pairs of feet also included the pair of feet of a gentleman called Judas Iscariot, who was also going to be the traitor who was going to betray him the next day to the Romans and the Jews. However, he left that, he, he continued that meeting or washing the feet by saying that I exhort you to serve others just like I have served you today. Um, many records state that that was the beginning of servant leadership. Now I'll fast forward you to 1970s, where a gentleman by the name of Robert Greenleaf uh, coined the term servant leadership. He looked at it as a timeless concept. But then he thought he should give it structure because there were many schools of leadership, many models of leadership, but you know, over time, many of them had been discredited. Many of them had not been able to deliver the outcomes which uh, they hoped that those models would. So he came up with this concept of a servant <laughs> leadership. Now, as a set of principles, what this uh, concept talks about, servant leadership, is you put the service of your team or your followers above everything else. Uh, in fact, it's quite the opposite of what we understand by leadership. It says that the leader must come last. It's like literally leading from behind. Okay. So you put the interests of your team leader, the team followers, or your other uh, you know, members of, who follow you to uh, you know, make sure that they achieve their best personality they achieve their best powers, and they uh, are able to improve themselves in many ways so that the whole ecosystem benefits. So servant leadership basically aims at a, at the individual level to empower the, the individual. Uh, secondly, it also helps to build better organizations because organizations are built uh, with individuals, by individuals. And then finally, organizations and individuals put together constitute the wider society. Uh, so therefore, this kind of leadership basically goes over three levels and ends up trying to make the world a more social, more just, more caring environment for everybody. So looking at uh, leadership from this perspective, you begin to realize that servant leadership has a much wider uh, you know, outlook on how to lead a group of people. Now history has many examples of such leaders. I mean, if you just uh, go back a few years, a few decades, uh, Mahatma Gandhi is a great example of uh, fantastic servant leadership. So was Mother Teresa, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. All of these people led from the behind as well as from the front, but they were always conscious of the fact of what, what, what was, how were they able to empower their you know, disenfranchised, voiceless people.
to fight for in the case of Gandhi, fight for freedom in the case of Mother Teresa, to find dignity, and in the case of Dr. Luther uh, King, uh, you know, probably freedom from slavery and so on and so forth, racial discrimination and all. So if you look at from uh, look at leadership from that perspective, it, it is much much broader. Now, coming to the point of uh, how do we how do we incorporate this into organizations? A very important point because uh, it's not easy to put other people before you. You've been selected to lead. You, you've been selected to direct, right? Now, um, one of the things uh, one of the famous Dutch researchers called Hofstede came up with the principle uh, of uh, the power distance between the leader and the led, or you know, people in power or authority and those who follow them. Uh, India happens to be, just to take an example, there are other, of course, many other countries as well. India is a country which has a large power distance, which means that people in charge uh, in countries which have a large power dist distance believe that it's uh, their divine right to lord over and rule over people uh, and uh, make them follow instructions and without you know, getting their buy-in or whatever. Now, this leads to a lot of problems. What kind of problems? Well. <clears throat> Uh, number one, a huge growth in psychophancy. Okay, what you call the tribe of yes men. They survive. Their whole purpose in life is to make the lives of these leaders glorious. Their existence to be like royalty. Okay, and they will do everything to, except to tell them the truth, which in, in turn results in those leaders ending up being out of touch with reality, out of touch with what's happening at the grassroots level. They become victims of red tapeism and bureaucratic you know, tangles. And people on the ground level, the people who actually are following these leaders, don't follow them out of any respect to love. Servant leadership is exactly the opposite. It's more of a marketing, uh, you know, customer-centric kind of approach rather than a product-centric kind of approach or a marketer-centric approach. And so that's the, uh, the Hofstede principle and the, the power distance uh, uh, explanation or why servant leadership is something worth following. Uh, what do we need to do to become servant leaders? Obviously, uh, it's very difficult to give up control. It's very difficult to say that, uh, you know, I'm not going to lead you people. Uh, I would rather empower you and you do it on your own and I will like have a hands-off approach. Many people are loath to give up that, uh, you know, control and domination over their uh, followers or, or team members. So, just to recount one example, uh, at Great Lakes we organize an event, organize an event every year called the TEDx Glen Gurdon, mm -hmm. um, an international event with a local chapter. You know, a lot of them are being organized all over the world now. But one of the things that I tried to do with uh, this uh, the student community, which was organizing this, was give them a broad outline and just tell them that you need to step out and do this event in the best possible way. Come to me when you need help or need guidance or some sort of solution. Otherwise, it's up to you. I will be there to solve your problems, but not dictate how you're going to run the event. Now, the event, two events, editions have, part, I mean, have been done or executed very well. And one of the key feedbacks that we received from the student community was that of all the events that normally happen in the campus, TEDx might be one of those events where they really learned how to empower others. And servant leadership is all about um, delegating authority, also understanding each individual's personal part, personal facet, right? There are different buttons which you press for different people. And it's also important for, as a servant leader to understand what's in the background, where does the student come from, or where does the follower come from, where does the team member come from, what is the educational background, family background, milestones, what is it that makes them tick so that helps a lot in becoming a great servant leader. So what are the advantages? I'll just wrap up with that. Uh, Long-term commitment of employees, right? Because they respect the leader, because they see the leader as serving them rather than just you know, directing them. Uh, lifelong friendships. Uh, uh, consumers, uh, sorry, employees becoming more passionate about serving the uh, customers. As business um, leaders, so when we teach business students, we tell them, we teach them a lot about customer delight and employees who are you know, impassioned because of the kind of leaders that they have, they go out and deliver much more uh, you know, happier outcomes for uh, customers. 
And as a result of that, we have more loyalty, we have more referral, we have more positive word of mouth. And overall, we end up becoming more responsible as a society, as an organization, and of course, the individual uh, follower gets empowered in, in, in ways more than one. You know, not just in leadership field, but also as a complete human being. All right, thank you so much.